Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Stryker 2313 Toy Hauler Travel Trailer by Cruiser RV. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside of the RV, then we're going to come on back to the outside and go over that as well for you. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the all new Striker 2313 by Cruiser RV. We're going to spin our way through the inside here and then we'll head outside and show you around there as well. Starting back here in the back of the RV, currently have it in dinette mode, seat mode, so you can sit down here. Uh, the table's outside, uh, got it out of our way for the moment here, but you'll see that when we get outside. This lower section can flip down and make into a bed as well as you see pop up there in the picture. Now you can also bring down the upper bunk as well if you need extra sleeping space up there or remove that and just leave it at home if you don't need the extra sleeping space. So that can come out, just unpin it and take it out. Um, so you got basically sleeping for four back here. And then you also have sleeping for two in the master bedroom that you'll see when we get in there. Now, when the lower bunk is down, you can also see up there, there's a couple speakers in the ceiling, a couple lights up there. You have a couple electric outlets up there and a vent up there as well. Now, when you do bring down that top bunk, you have to raise the bottom bunk up and basically allow it to go up and push up on the top bunk so you can remove the pins. This is currently pinned in. You can see the little pin up there. There's four pins, one in each leg. And you basically gotta remove those pins, but you use the lower portion of that to basically raise that up, hold the weight so you can pull the pins out and then you lower them down together. So you're using the bottom section to hold the weight of the top section. If you just walk over there and start pulling out pins, that top bed's gonna kind of fall down the track on top of you. You don't wanna do that, that's not a good thing. Behind here, you do have the little screened in area here. Um, so basically we have a plastic tented area right there, along with a privacy shade as well. You can leave it up or bring it down, whichever you prefer. You have nice windows here. Again, deep tent safety glass windows. They do open. And you also have pull down shades. These just kind of pull down. Nice little night shades, blackout shades there. The area back here in the back does have a little bit of rubber diamond plate on it, but it's also kind of sloped down back here. And there's also some roll up carpet that will roll out if you want. And once you get your toys out of here, you can roll that out across this section um, so that it's kind of protects your feet if you're in here barefoot from the tie downs and stuff. Um, but also just kind of gives it that carpeted feel in here. On the side of the cabinet there, there is an electric outlet and there's also a couple heat ducts down there that come out the side of that cabinet. You do have some storage under the sink along with two full extending ball bearing drawer guided drawers there. Nice solid surface, heavy duty countertops there. High rise faucet and you have the cover over the sink there, but that is a large undermount stainless sink there. You have some overhead cabinets as well. The window behind the faucet does open. There's an electric outlet there in the center also. And you have a large TV here. Now the TV is on a swing arm, so you can swing that out. You can see in the picture there, your TV antenna booster button back in behind there and the electric outlet and stuff. 
Um, one thing on the TV though, if you do swing that TV out, you've got to be real cautious on the ceiling fan. Because if you bring that TV out too far and the ceiling fan's on, it will actually hit that. So be careful with that for the first time you try and use it. You have a roof vent up there with a little fan in it as well. You have the large Hisense microwave here. Really nice microwave for an RV. The Furion oven, which has the glass front and the light built in, along with the lighted LED knobs. Three burner stove top up top. And then it has the glass lid, which is currently up, kind of acts as a backsplash, but it'll flip down and then kind of act as counter space as well. Now the black grate below the oven there is where your furnace is at. So it's kind of your furnace return area right there. There is also an access panel below the drawers down there to get in. There's a couple screws to remove that. Not quite sure what's back there. I have not taken it apart, but there is an access panel there. And another access panel, uh, which I believe is for the water heater underneath of the refrigerator there um, to get to your like bypass and stuff as well. The electric box with your breakers and fuses down there, along with your propane leak detector on the wall down there. Refrigerator here is a gas and electric refrigerator by Dometic. Uh, off the top of my head, it looks like it's an eight cubic foot, if I remember correctly, uh, but we'll pop up the model number and stuff here so you can always look it up and check it out too. Little reclining Euro chair here. Big window overlooking your campsite area. Very nice window, does open. Again, another pull down roller shade there. You have some overhead cabinetry here. Good amount of space. And on the left side is where the amplifier is for the subwoofer and speakers. A Little bit of overhead shelf area if you want to put some stuff up top of there and you have the LED light strip up there as well. Subwoofer on, on the side of the cabinet here, front of the cabinet, just above your stereo system here. My soul radio does have Bluetooth. It's also a DVD player it says as well. MP3 player. Over here you have some controls. So you have your air conditioner and furnace controls, which is basically a digital thermostat. You have your up and down button for your bed lift. USB charger ports, ceiling fan, and light switch here, coat hook obviously, and then your control panel here. So in and out, auxiliary button, which works the red lights on the bottom. Cap light, porch light, or awning LED light strip, depending on which way you flip it. Water heater on gas button, electric buttons outside, you'll see that when we get out there. Water pump, a couple more light switches as well here. Then a little bit of shelf space there to set something. And then you do have some more overhead shelf space as well. One of the vents, fire extinguisher again guys don't forget to check out couches RV nation guys they are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers and will definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV if you're interested now over here is the bathroom area here. We're gonna pop up some pictures of this for you as well so it's a little easier to see. But you have a foot flush toilet down below. A Little bit of storage space under the sink area and a traditional wood medicine cabinet. Electric outlet, there is a light switch there and also the up and down button for the fan in here. Um, you have a fan up top Obviously that's pretty high up, so they do put an up and down button on it. 
skylight up above the shower area. You have the uh, ABS tub surround there to help protect the shower wall. I like how they at least put some little uh, corner shelves in there as well. So you got some place to you know, put your soap and your shampoo and stuff. It is a traditional curtain to slide across there. There is also a heat duct down below there and a sliding door to block it off from the bedroom area. Little shelf area, and again, another little towel hook holders. But overall, not a bad bathroom for a small RV like this. And it does have a lock on the bathroom door. Now going around this way, we're entering into the master bedroom from the hallway area here. Electric outlet on each side of the bed. The unit has a king bed standard. Now, this king bed's a little unique. Um, they started doing this on the Cruiser products for mid-year model change on some of their brands. This bed will actually slide left or right. There's a latch that you remove, and you can slide it all the way over against the wall. And you'll see that pop up here in the picture. That basically just gave us a whole bunch of extra room uh, to kind of maneuver around to get dressed and stuff. Um, if you like a queen bed instead of a king, you can basically push that bed against the wall. And the portion that goes underneath of the cabinet there basically is, uh, I want to say about 10 inches or 12 inches or so roughly, which basically makes the sleepable space a queen bed, so about 60 by 80 kind of scenario. Um, so even though you push it all the way over the side, you still pretty much have a queen bed for sleeping. But if you like that king, you just slide it back to the middle and get the extra space. You have a roof vent up top with the fan in it again. Some overhead reading lights here. Now you also have um, your generator start stop button back there. And then there's some USB charger ports here as well. And you have hanging closet on each side and overhead cabinets as well window on both sides of the bed and they do open and you have the nice roller shades on there up top you have your tv hookups there there's room to mount a tv on the wall there there's a bracket area right there would be a small tv though because there's not a huge amount of wall space but you could do a small tv here But overall, pretty nice little setup here. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, good for a golf cart, uh, motorcycle, you know, four-wheeler, um, some razors, depending on how large and wide they are. Uh, but we'll put the uh, measurements of the garage uh, down below in the description, but it's also some of the measurements are on the floor plan as well at the beginning of the video. We're gonna head outside, guys. I wanna show you around the outside and then we'll be finishing up. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of the all new 2021 and a half Striker 2313 toy hauler trailer here. We're gonna start here on the door side and then kind of work our way around the RV. So exterior stayed fairly similar. The biggest difference is gonna be the fiberglass front cap that you'll see when we get back around to the front. Uh, but the graphics changed up a hair, but still basically the white, black, and red kind of graphic that they've been using for a little while. Um, up front here, you do have a storage compartment, pretty large storage compartment there. And you can kind of see the aluminum tube framing up there. The battery disconnect and a light up there as well on the uh, right side. And the baggage door itself is held up by a magnetic holder. And they also use the key alike system. So your key for your baggage door is also the same key for your entry door, which is pretty nice. You don't have a bunch of different keys to fumble around with. You have power stabilizer jacks. You can see pop up here in the picture. I got them down there. 
Uh, also see that red light, which works off the auxiliary switch inside the RV panel up there. Um, but uh, so you got an enclosed underbelly down there, power stabilizer jacks. Now the power stabilizer jack button is up here on this side of the RV. And then for the back power stabilizer jacks, that button will be back there on that side. You have deep tent safety glass windows, which is pretty nice just having that extra tent to it so that it doesn't uh, fade out the inside of the RV as bad. And also it does kind of help a little bit with privacy as well during the daytime. You have a power awning here with an LED light strip built in, adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff. And then it does have the uh, manual override where you can stick a socket in it and crank it in in case of an electronic failure in this front headpiece here. Now, besides having that LED light strip, it also has an amber porch light up there. And you can either work one or the other, depending on how much light you need. You do have a window in the entry door, and that window is slim shade ready. There's actually a shade that you can buy for it aftermarket and slides up and down, kind of like a night shade that you've uh, seen on RVs over the years. Triple entrance step getting you in and out of the RV. It's a traditional hover style step rated for 300 pounds. You have the large folding entry handle there again to kind of help you get in and out of the RV. Now just down below that you'll see uh, the extended season RV uh, sticker there which basically tells you enclosed underbelly. They also have a heat duct blowing down into that area as well. Your model number is also located right there again ST. 2313 model and then you'll see the little advertisement there for the three-year limited structural warranty that is a nice feature for the RV having that three-year structural warranty backed by the manufacturers uh, some manufacturers still only do a one-year warranty so it is nice to know that they're standing behind their product a little longer now up Next to that amber light up there, you can see the little gray thing up there, silver thing. That is one of the side vents. So if you're traveling down the road and you'd have uh, you know, razor or motorcycle, some sort of gasoline kind of shaking around in there, whatever, you pop those open and it allows it to kind of vent out as you're driving down the road. You have a couple speakers up top there above the window. There is also TV hookups out here. So you have an electric outlet and a cable outlet out here. So you could plug a TV in out here and set it down on something. Dual axle unit here, and you can see, um, when we get around to the other side, we'll get to the tire sizes and stuff, but uh, aluminum wheels here. And also it does have the upgraded Dexter uh, center point suspension there, which kind of acts as a shock absorber for the RV. Now the sidewall of the RV is actually attached, the fiberglass is attached to Asdale composite material instead of a wood lou on board. This is a really nice feature because it does not um, delaminate from water damage and rot. Uh, it's also a better insulator and sound deadener for how the RV is put together. Uh, it's made in America, nice product. Uh, but you will start seeing this more on a little bit higher line RVs um, when it comes to the sidewall construction of a laminated unit. Some brands still use the traditional wood glue on board, uh, which does nicely, unless it gets wet, then it can damage and rot and delaminate and bubble out. Ramp doors down, as you've seen when we were inside there. Uh, the table, which goes in the dinette area, if you want to set it up for the dinette area, that is a metal top table with folding legs. But it's pretty nice that you can actually bring it outside, set it up out here, use a little picnic table area. Uh, again, it's metal, so you don't have to worry about the rain and stuff rotting that out and damaging a traditional uh, wood luon type of table that you'll find in a lot of RVs. Uh, now, obviously, you don't want to let it get in the water too much because then you could cause rust or something like that if you scratch it up and damage the surface. But uh, definitely like the fact that it is metal instead of a traditional wood type of table. 
Up top there, you do have two docking lights. You can see they are currently on. And up above that center running light up there, you are pre-wired for a Furion observation camera. Uh, definitely recommend the observation camera, whatever brand you want to buy. Um, but it is pretty nice to be able to see behind you while you're driving down the road and also see when you're trying to back into that camp spot, especially at nighttime. Over here on this side of the RV, you do have a ladder that pops out there. You can see in the picture, 250 pound rating that'll get you up onto the roof. Now on the roof, you see in this picture that pops up as well, you do have a whole bunch of stuff up there as far as your know, plumbing stack vents, your air conditioner, the ladder top piece, uh, you know, vents, things like that, that are all holes put in that roof. You gotta get up there from time to time, maintain those seals that are on there, guys. Uh, over time, that stuff will start to crack open and you need to get up there and inspect it. Doesn't matter if it's a rubber roof, TPO, PVC, fiberglass roof, whatever, you know, they all are gonna have these holes in them and they all need to be checked and resealed as necessary. Again, you can see, which we did see this inside as well, but you do have the uh, fold down screen here, one side up, one side down, but it has a little tinted window in the plastic part there, so you can actually uh, see through it or drop down that privacy shade. Now, this one was ordered without the party deck, um, so you can get the optional party deck if you want. This customer chose not to do that feature, uh, but that is available if you want to do that. And we'll pop up a picture here so you can see what this looks like with the door closed, guys. Nice you know, white fiberglass with some decals on the back. Nothing real fancy, but does look good. Your other vent here for fume. Down below here is where your uh, fuel pump station is. So you fill up your gas tank here. You have your fuel switch on off with your gauge and you also have your fuel pump here as well. Right here you have your little docking station area, I guess you'd call it. Your black tank flush is here. City water inlet is here. You have a spray port here, which is a blue coil up hose. Um, that's great for if you get your razor muddy or your four wheelers, whatever, you can pull them over here and hose them off before you load them in. Cable satellite inlets as well, and your furnace exhaust out right here. A detachable power cord right here, the little yellow handle. And that basically is probably about a 25 or 30 foot cord that stretches out. 10 gallon gas and electric water heater here. You can see in the picture popping up there, inch and a 16th drain socket in the lower middle, electric switch in the lower left corner. And you got your um, pressure relief valve up top. Make sure you do relieve the pressure before you attempt to drain it. Now here you have uh, above that your access panel for maintenance on the back of the refrigerator. And you can see there's a little drain that comes out of there, a little condensation drain. Down below here is your gray and black tank dump. All comes out of one area, two separate handles to pull. The gray handle is obviously the gray and the black handle is obviously the black. Now over here, you do have an area for a generator. It comes pre-wired for that generator, but the generator is an option. If you do want it, you can opt in when you're ordering your RV, uh, or otherwise you just get the boxed out area with all the wiring and stuff, and it's just a storage compartment at that point. Now, next to that door is your gravity fill, um, freshwater tank fill. So you basically stick the hose in it, fill up the tank. Down next to this running light is a pre-wire for a portable solar panel. They advertise for the GoPower brand, 
uh, but there's all kinds of nice brands out there, Zamp and others as well, but Go Power is a really good brand as well. On the corner of the RV is some stickers. So you're gonna see your first sticker popping up here is your main data sticker, which is your production date, gross vehicle weight, axle sizes, uh, all that type of stuff right there on that first sticker. The next sticker popping up is your dry weight sticker. So basically it's gonna tell you what the RV rolled off the assembly line and weighed supposedly when they put it on the scale. Now those do vary a little bit, few pounds here or there, depending on the options on the RV. Also depending on the time of year as well, because sometimes they're weighed with a little bit of water in them, sometimes it's winter time and there's no water in them kind of scenario. Um, so it just kind of depends on how it rolls down the assembly line. Uh, you'll get a few pounds difference between brand or different models basically. Um, Next sticker is your tire sticker here, and this is important because it not only tells you your tire size for replacement, but also it tells you your tire pressure. Really important guys to check your tire pressure before every trip. Tires can only hold a certain amount of weight at a certain pressure, and you want to make sure that you have it at the proper pressure so you're not overloading those tires. Another thing popping up here is gonna be your carrying capacity, which basically tells you how much you can load into the RV before you exceed that gross vehicle weight rating. Now back to the front here that we're staring at is the new look for the fiberglass front cap. So all different design compared to the early version as far as the graphics and stuff, the coloration up front here. Uh, you also have three LED light strips built in. It is a three quarter fiberglass cap basically. So the lower portion is a metal and they do metal down below for the main reason of rocks and stuff flying up as you're driving down the road and chipping and cracking fiberglass. Uh, so it's actually a little bit easier to just replace the dented metal than try and re-fiberglass and repaint a cap on the lower side in case of rock damage kind of scenario. Uh, so that is why you do see most RVs with fiberglass caps having the lower portion as metal. Now you do have a power tongue jack on the front with an LED light built in as well. Two and five sixteenths hitch ball. And you also have your heavy duty safety chains, breakaway cable as well. And in your propane tanks with the auto changeover regulator under the black cover there. Now it will come with zero batteries from the RV manufacturer. You can see there's nothing on it right now. They're getting ready to prep the camper. Uh, so we'll actually be putting a deep cycle interstate battery on it at Couches RV Nation. That is what they do here. Um, there's room for a second battery if you wanted to opt in for a second battery or if you are that off the grid type of camper. So definitely talk with your sales guy about that as well if that does interest you. All right, guys, again, thank you for checking out my video on the new Striker 2313. Uh, great little toy hauler. Hope you enjoyed it. Really do appreciate it, guys. Again, check out Couch's RV Nation, guys. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country. Definitely save you guys a lot of money. Thanks again, guys.